What's going on? <coughs> me, me fly here. See something from sky Littlefoot must see. What is it? Oh, it big surprise. Follow me. Hello, little foot. Dad, you're back! Uh, I'm surprised you and Shorty are back in the Great Valley, Dad. I know it's sooner than our regular visit, but... You do know why your dad's here, don't you? Run, you're here. We were beginning to wonder if you were going to make it. I've already begun to set up the testing place. Testing place? Yeah, for the big long neck test. Huh? The big long neck test is a series of tasks many young long necks must face before they reach the time of great growing. It's usually given to a young long neck by his mother or father. That's why I'm here. So, what do I have to do to pass the big long neck test? Ah, that would be telling. The test is designed to see if a long neck has the qualities needed to someday lead a herd. Whoa. You better get to sleep early tonight, Littlefoot. Grandma's right. At the first sign of the bright circle, we'll head out to the testing place. What's the matter, little foot? Nervous about the test? A little. I really want to pass this test. But I wish I had more time to prepare. Braun says it's the kind of test you're either ready for or not. <laughs> that sounds like something Ruby might say. Well, I think you're lucky. I really want to take the test, but Braun won't let me. It will be your turn soon, Shorty. Once you're ready. But I'm ready now. Uh, maybe you could give Shorty the test today instead of me. <laughs> it's time, little foot. Let's go. Here we are, son. Now can you tell me what the big long neck test is? The test is comprised of three separate tasks. Each task ends when you find a red tree star. A red tree star. Okay. Now the first task is a difficult path that will test your strength, endurance, and courage. You'll need to reach the top of Flat Mountain to complete the task. Uh, okay. down. Maybe. Maybe. 
Maybe I could just jump across the fire pit. I can jump across that big fire pit. <sighs> I'm sorry, Dad. I just can't find a safe way to do this one. I guess I'm not ready to be a leader yet. Congratulations, little foot. You've passed the big long neck test. What? But how? I didn't cross the fire pit. How could I pass? This test was different than the others. It was a test of judgment. The task was impossible, and you correctly decided not to try it. What if I had tried to cross the fire pit? I would have stopped you, and you wouldn't have passed. But even if you failed the test, little foot, I'd still love you. <laughs> Let's go. Here they come. Littlefoot! Did you complete the test? Yes, he did. Dad. Someday I hope I can lead a herd just like you. Well, Littlefoot, it seems that you already have your own herd to lead. Oh, great. Another long neck leader. And that's why tree stars change color before the cold times. Wow, that was a great one, Grandpa. Yes, tell us another story so we can listen to it. Yeah! Yes. <laughs> oh, um, all right. Uh, now, let's see. Oh, I know. Once many cold times ago, there was a young longneck named Star Watcher. Every night, he climbed to the top of a hill to look at the sky stars. But one night, the Sky Stars decided to come down out of the sky. They wanted to take a look at the Long Neck who was always looking at them. The Sky Stars said hello to Star Watcher and asked if he would like to visit them up in the sky. Are you sure that's how it happened? Huh? I'm not so sure you're telling that story right. I think you must be forgetting the stories in your old age. <gasps> Saro, is that you? It's me, all right. I thought I'd never find you. I can't believe it. After all this time, I'd given up hope. I never gave up. Like green food in cold times, it, it may shrink, shrink away, away, but, but it, it will always grow back. back. <laughs> <laughs> Grandpa, who is this? Children, I want you to meet an old friend of mine. His name is Sorrow. It's a pleasure to meet you all. But who's this? A sharp tooth? <laughs> oh, that's Chomper. He was hatched by Littlefoot. And now he's living with us. Yeah. I want to learn how different dinosaurs can all get along. Well, you couldn't have found a better teacher. It was good to hear you tell one of the long neck stories again. Grandpa's great at telling stories. Oh, I know. Your grandpa was a great story speaker. Story speaker? What's that? A story speaker would travel the land, telling the great long neck stories to all the long neck herds. And you were a story speaker, Grandpa? Your Grandpa was one of the finest story speakers ever. I tried to learn every story I could from him. 
Oh, well, I, I just wanted everyone to remember our important past. <laughs> Me like stories. <laughs> <laughs> I do too, I do, I do. <laughs> yeah, Grandpa, Sorrow, could you tell us one of the great long neck stories? <laughs> well, I think we might be able to remember a story or two. Now, who knows how long necks got their name? Oh, it is because they have long necks. Yep, yep, yep. Everyone knows that. But did you know that long necks didn't always have long necks? They didn't? Many cold times ago, before you or I had hatched, long necks had short necks. Back then, the trees were very short, so they could eat tree stars from the top of the trees. The trees would sing to the bright circle every day as it crossed the sky. The bright circle liked their song so much that it reached down and pulled the trees until they were very tall. That way, they would be closer to the sky when they sang their bright circle songs. But now, the tree stars were so high that the short-necked long necks couldn't reach them. That night, the night circle felt sorry for them and reached down to comfort them. The light made them feel better. And so, they lifted their heads up to get closer to the night circle. In doing so, their necks stretched enough to reach the tree stars. The kindness of the night circle helped us become long necks. And that is how long necks got their long necks. That was a very good story. Yep, yep, yep. Petrie, you gotta go for help. Me no fly here. Only make mountain even matter. <laughs> Petrie, you didn't make the mountain mad, but even if you did, you still have to fly. We're counting on you. Okay, me go. <sighs> a boy, Petrie! You can do it! <sighs> me wish me as sure of that as she is. <sighs> me not make mountain mad. Me not make mountain mad. Oh! It's not mad. Smoky Mountain, just a mountain after all. <laughs> and don't worry, guys. Me hurry. I knew he could do it. Yep, yep, yep. Now all we have to do is wait. And when all you have to do is wait, waiting's easy to do. <laughs> oh! Yeah, easy to do. It's just been so quiet lately. I hope the kids aren't getting bored. Mommy! Petrie? Oh! Oh! <laughs> Ouch. Well, what is it, Petrie? <sighs> me, me friends, they need help. <laughs> Um, is it just me, or is it getting kind of hot around here? It's not just you. I hate to say it, but I'm hungry. I wish you would not look at me when you say that. Yes, I do. I really do. Yoo-hoo! Guys, me coming! Petrie, you did it! You're here, Littlefoot. Just climb aboard, kids, and we'll go for a ride. Here you go.
go, kids. <laughs> Tickle. Watch your step now, one at a time. Tria! Wait till you see what I have. We came all this way to get you a new shiny stone and... Sarah! Ah! Look out! Ah! <gasps> oh, no! <laughs> Oops, eeps. I'm really sorry, Tria, about everything. I'm just glad you're safe, Sarah. You're much more important to me than any shiny stone. Well, time to head home, everybody. Looks like we'll have to take the long way around. Not us. We flyers. And Smoky Mountain, just a mountain. Last one home, a rotten hatchling. <laughs> and the young ones to safety. The rest of you, fall in behind me and Grandpa Longneck. <sighs> Time to show some fast biters that they're not welcome here. <sighs> hey, you, fast biters. You all know what to do. Hungry and sorry tonight. Those sneaky fast biters got clean away. Oh, we've searched everywhere. They must have found a way into the valley we don't know about. It's been a long time since any sharp teeth got into the Great Valley. This is a very dangerous development. We've seen those fast biters with Red Claw. <laughs> and Red Claw is the biggest and meanest sharp tooth of them all. So if they're here, he's not far behind. Then we need to find out how the fast biters are getting in and out. Until we know, we'll have to keep an eye out day and night. I'll say you made a mistake. No one is supposed to eat the tree sweets in the hidden canyon. You say you saw footprints. Yeah, fast spider footprints. Children, how much of the tree sweets did you eat? Uh, a lot. What's that got to do with anything? Those tree sweets have a smell that sharp teeth don't like. In fact, it makes them sick. I believe that. But if there aren't many tree sweets left, the smell won't stop Sharp Teeth from coming into the Great Valley. What? Oh, no! Grandma, you warn the others. Mr. Threehorn and I will check on the Hidden Canyon. At least now we know how the Sharp Teeth got in. Well, there are still some tree sweets up here. Well, you can hardly smell them. No wonder it didn't keep the sharp teeth away. 
Uh, we'll just have to find another way to keep the sharp teeth out. That screech is screech. The fast fighters are back. There's no time to get away. <laughs> Littlefoot, you and your friends go back and get help. Mr. Threehorn and I will make sure you get away. Yes, we can stop the sharp teeth, at least for a while. Now go. Stand the tree sweets. He's running away! 
Yes, Littlefoot. We have to make sure there's no way for Sharp Teeth to get into the valley. We can never, ever go back to our special hidden place. No, no, no. Now that the hidden canyon has been closed off, the Great Valley is once again safe from sharp teeth. My friends and I want to apologize for putting everyone in danger. We didn't tell everyone about the tree sweets we found. We so, so sorry. Well, you should be sorry. I'm getting too old to tangle with sharp teeth. But, Daddy, you are so brave the way you fought Red Claw. Oh. <laughs> Oh, well, it was nothing, really. <laughs> there I was, face to face with Red Claw. Oh. Now, the trick to fighting Sharp Teeth is not to let them think you're afraid. So I marched right up to that big bully and I looked him right in the eye. He knew 